Hey there, Amanda from the Happy Homestead. I have so much kale in the garden. That is what I grew over the winter. I usually plant the seeds October-ish, November-ish. Now where I am, I'm in zone 7B. So I'm able to do some of those cold crops over the winter. It starts to grow. And then usually in the spring, I have a ton of kale to harvest. And that's now, I have so much. I already did harvest a huge patch two days ago. And so I've got to finish the rest today because it's time to get the summer garden in. All of my tomato and cucumber transplants that I started from seed, they need to get in the garden. So I've got to get that kale out. So I harvested a little bit this morning because what I want to do is show you how to make kale chips. This is one of our favorite things to do with kale. Now we use kale in just about any recipe that requires some sort of green salads or, or anything else with any other recipe. It's our favorite type of green, all because it is so easy to grow and it is so nutritious. Um, but kale chips is something that, you know, I don't do that often just because it takes some work as far as a lot of kale. But when we've got a lot to harvest, it's a really fun treat. So let me show you how we do this. So I harvested a bunch of kale. I washed it. Now I still use a salad spinner. I don't know if that's popular anymore or not, but I love my salad spinner. So I washed it, spun out all the water. And now what I'm going to do is take off some of these really thick and woody stems. So there'll be some pieces, right, that don't have much of a stem because they're like a baby kale. And I'm just going to throw that in my bowl. But then there's some other pieces that do have kind of that thicker stem. And so all I do is just kind of take it off and throw it in. And then I got another bowl for compost for those, those uh, stems. So really I'm just stripping off the leaves and putting them in the bowl. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now we use, the kale that we use, you may have noticed, it's not the curly kale that you'll find mostly in the grocery store. And it's not the lacinato or the dinosaur kale, I think is the other term for that. This is called, I believe it's called purple kale. And we got our seeds from Baker Creek. Um, I will put a link down below with the exact kale variety that we use. But this is our favorite kale. And this is the one that I exclusively grow. Um, the other reason I like it, so, so you can see, right, it's not the curly kale. The leaves are really big and kind of broad and flat. The other reason, so the taste, but for the third time, the other reason I really like this kale is because I can tell when there are bugs. <laughs> so sometimes on the curly kale, you can't always tell, you know, when there's those little cabbage worms or, or little bugs that have laid eggs. Usually it's the cabbage worm. Um, within your greens and like, I don't mind a little extra protein here and there from the bugs but it's not my top choice like my favorite <laughs> so I always um, really like to grow this type of kale too because I can easily see it in the garden and even in the sink so I'll be using our Excalibur dehydrator I'm able to see it in the corner right there. That's what I use to dehydrate the kale and make the kale chips. Now, you don't have to have an Excalibur dehydrator, right? There's all kinds of dehydrators out there. If you have one, that's what I would recommend using. I put it on, and I'll get to the fact if you don't have one in just a second. I put it on the lowest heat setting. So my Excalibur some Excaliburs and other dehydrators, they have a setting for the actual temperature and then they have a setting like the timer, how many hours. So for the temperature, I always do 105 degrees. Now the reason is because the, it's, I think it's like between 105 to 112 or 115, um, depending upon the source, anything under basically 112 degrees is considered a living food. So what that means is that the heat is not killing all of those beneficial enzymes within the produce, right? Fruits and vegetables, that's where all the, the really good enzymes are. 
And when you heat food up, you're, you're killing those enzymes. So, and don't get me wrong, like it's okay to cook your food, but that's why it's also really important to have some raw foods in your diet too. And so by doing the kale chips at that lower temperature, all of those really beneficial enzymes are still in the kale and living, which is great. All right, see how fast that was? It's done. All right, and so if you don't, and so that's why I do it at that temperature, and then I just do it overnight. I'll put them in, but I won't start the dehydrator till you know I go to bed or something, and then I'll just check it in the morning. If you do not have a dehydrator, don't fret. You can still make kale chips. You just do it in your oven, and you're gonna do it on the lowest possible setting. It could take a little longer. So truth be told, I have not, never actually made kale chips in the oven because I've always had a dehydrator. I've had this dehydrator for probably 15 or 16 years. So I, it's just what I've used. But you can do it in the oven. Now, I don't think the oven is as low as, you know, 105, 110 degrees. So you may not get the benefits of those living enzymes but you can still make the kale chips and don't get me wrong, they're still very healthy and nutritious for you, no matter what temperature. Okay, so I've got all my kale in here. I'm just gonna kind of break this up a bit into some smaller pieces. You can see that better. So yeah, if you're using your oven, you're just doing it at the lowest temperature possible and you kind of have to keep a watch on it. So you're not gonna do that while you go to bed. <laughs> you're not gonna put your kale chips in, turn the oven on and go to bed. You're just not gonna do it, I hope. But you can do it in the oven. Um, I would just do it on a day where you know you're gonna be home, right? And you can just periodically check. So what you'll be looking for, and I'll show you the finished product, but what you'll be looking for is a really dry chip. You know, like, crumbles like a chip, it crackles like a chip when you bite into it, it's gonna be basically all the moisture is gone. All right, this looks great. Look how beautiful this kale is. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add our flavor. Now you can do kale chips all kinds of flavors. Again, truth be told, I have not ventured from this particular combination that I'm gonna show you because it is so good. Um, so, two, only two ingredients besides the kale. Nutritional yeast. If you've never heard of nutritional yeast, it's, um, it's something a lot of vegetarians and vegans use. They use it a lot in recipes for a kind of a savory or cheesy flavor. It replaces Parmesan cheese sometimes. Um, it's just, I mean, we use it a lot. I just sprinkled on things. So we're going to actually use some nutritional yeast in here and it's going to, it's salty as well. And it's very high. I believe it in B vitamins. And so this will just give you a little extra nutritional boost, but it will give a little bit of that cheesy, salty flavor. The other thing we use, and I can't recommend this enough is the Nama Shoyu. So this is an unpasteurized soy sauce and it is amazing. We have been using this particular soy sauce for many, many years and I really try not to buy any other kind. So what we're gonna do, and smell it, when you open the jet bottle, smell it, it smells so good. It's not like typical soy sauce. I'm just gonna pour some in, maybe about a quarter cup. I mean, honestly, guys, I, I don't really measure anything here. This is all eyeball, just to kinda see. And as I go through and mix this up, I'll know if I need to add more. And then I'm gonna throw some nutritional yeast in. Okay. And I'm gonna use gloves because I use my hands. I'd recommend using your hands for this part. If you have gloves, great. If not, no worries. And I'm just gonna start turning and mixing it all together. And so the nutritional yeast and the soy sauce, or the Nama Shoyu, will kind of come together and create like a 
a slurry. I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of that word. <laughs> I cannot think of a better word to use at this point. It's like a slurry. And so you'll start kind of massaging it in to all of the different kale leaves because you really want every piece to get the flavor. And because it's going to be dehydrated, it is going to concentrate, right? So these are going to be like the salty, cheesy, kind of savory flavor. And they are a hit. Do not knock this combination until you try it. I've had other kale chips that I've purchased, right? You know, whether it's be dill or garlic or whatever, and they're okay. But to me, this is the best. All right. So you can see it's already wilted down a little bit. I do not need to add any more namashoyu. I am going to add a little more nutritional yeast. And so the nutritional yeast I get from Azure Standard and I'll post the link to that below. It is one of the things that we buy regularly. And then the Nama Shoyu, um, there's a few different places you can get that. You can actually get it on Amazon. Um, I have to look to see if Azure sells it as well. They may. If they do, I will post that link. Okay, that's it. So that took no time at all. So now what we're gonna do is put this on our dehydrator trays. So if you're using the oven, you're going to use a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and then evenly spread that out. If you're using a dehydrator, you're gonna do what I'm doing here and take your, take your tray and you're gonna start layering it on. Now you do not wanna put it on like this, right? Like a big clump because then it's gonna dehydrate into a big clump. So I try to spread it out a bit because you want to have multiple pieces of chips. Now my dehydrator also has what's called like Teflax sheets. It's almost um, like a, it's a sheet here like you can use to make, it's a non-stick sheet rather is what it is. And I use it to make fruit roll-ups or whatnot. But I like to use just the the vented tray sheet because I really want the air to get through all of the different crevices of these pieces of kale. Okay, we got one in. Let's go get the other one. And so I'll dehydrate them overnight, like I said. So anywhere from eight to 10 hours. I'll just check it in the morning. And then for storage, honestly, once they're done, I just leave them in my dehydrator. Um, and the reason is because if I feel that there's a lot of moisture in the air and they're not as crispy anymore, I can just turn it back on, but it's just easier for us that way. So you can, once they're dry, right, take them out of your oven or your dehydrator, let them really dry fully to make sure there's no moisture, even just from the temperature buildup, right? If you put them right in a bag, it could create a little steam. So just make sure they're fully cooled and dried, and then you can put them in a Ziploc bag and store them. Okay, so that tray is not as full. Okay, so here is the dehydrator. I'll just put this up here for a sec. It has a door that kind of opens this way. And then in it, it's a nine tray Excalibur. So it holds nine trays. So I'm just gonna put one of the trays in of our chips we just made in, and then the second one. And then up here, there's a little graphic that kind of tells you the different temperatures for different items, right? So herbs would be 95 degrees, living degrees, it says 105, um, making yogurt 115, vegetables 125, you could do jerkies, right? And that's a higher temperature. And then there's another knob for time and it can go up to 24 hours. But 
Here are the kale chips, right, with the magic of television. Here are the kale chips that I made before and dehydrated. So I'm gonna show you some of these. So I took these out of the dehydrator this morning. You can see that they're certainly a little bit lighter in color, right, than when I just put the, the new batch in. And do you can see also like, you know, depending on how big the clumps are, they dry, but you can easily break it and make it into smaller chips. Um, I don't know what else to say, except they're delicious. So I'm just gonna try a little piece. And when you get a piece that has that concentrated slurry on it, it's so good, the flavor, yeah. My kids had some of these for breakfast this morning. <laughs> and then they had some in their lunch for today. And it was funny because last night, my daughter, when she woke up, she's four years old, and she woke up and she said, Mommy, were you making kale chips last night? And I said, yes, they were in the dehydrator. She says, I smelled it all night from my bed, and it smelled so good. <laughs> So yeah, like your whole house in the dehydrator will start to smell whatever you're doing for a little bit, but it's a good smell depending upon what you're making. And so yeah, they were really excited to come down this morning and have some kale chips. I would like you to try this. If you've never made kale chips before, you have got to try it. It's a really good healthy alternative to potato chips and other like snacky foods, right? We don't want them in our diet. We don't want them in our life. They don't they may provide some temporary happiness in, in some way, but overall, they're just not doing us any good. So try the kale chips. I think you'll surprise yourself and you'll like them. They're so easy and they're so affordable to make. And you can grow your own kale to do it as well. Or just go to the store and buy some organic kale and make it. I hope this helped you. Think about different ways to use kale from your garden or even other greens. It doesn't even have to be kale. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Stay healthy. Stay well. See you next time.